Sure slitting is a popular way of cutting on a slitter rewinder. A lot of products can go through a shear knife and give you excellent results. Like paper, very common with shear slitting. Film, see a lot of different films, particularly as it gets thicker, you'll use shear knives. Non-wovens, you'll see shear knives used on laminates like label stock, things of that nature. This photograph is a Catbridge surface winder. The machine goes 6,000 feet a minute. It has shear knives. And when we talk about shear knives, I just wanna explain what's happening here. We have a male knife, which is this holder right here. And we have a female, which are these rings on the shaft. These are precisely set with an auto positioner or by hand, depending on the machine capabilities. And these really set the tolerance back here. The paper comes in this particular case across the front tangentially. And this knife, the male knife cuts on the edge of these rings or female knives. These happen to be double-sided knives, so you can flip them around if there's you know, wear on one side or something of that nature. But you're looking at shear slitting inside of one of our machines. Here's another one of our surface winders, and you're looking at slitting knives with paper here. The results from slitting on a machine like this look like this. This is the front end of the surface winder. These are narrow cuts coming off of here. So this particular build goes 4,000 feet a minute makes rolls up to 80 inch diameter and comes off of one of our surface winders. The minimum slit depends on the knife holder. The particular holders that we have on now can get down to about two inch, slightly less actually. And there's lots of different ways to getting to a minimum slit. With narrower female rings and narrower holders, we can get to uh, sizes typically around one inch, two inch and three inch are the common sizes with holders. When we need to go below that, we go to stack shafts. So here's quarter inch spacing on the females, and it looks like, like about one inch spacing on the males, or you, you can get down to quarter inch on this type of thing too, where there's a male and female shaft and allows us to get to narrow cuts. This particular machine, you're looking at shear and auto score in it. So that's that. You know, you'll see a lot of different applications. I'll try to give you some examples. We talked about razor slitting film before, but shear cutting is another great way to do the same thing. It takes a little bit more effort to, to make a setup when you don't have a positioner. But honestly, when you have a positioner built into the machine, you could coordinate other things and it becomes a much easier, more reliable way to slit and quickly make your setups. This is a Catbridge 900 slitter rewinder. It has auto positioning. And when we auto position the knives, we know where they are in the machine. And that helps us auto position or assist in putting the cores on on the rewind. So this particular product happens to be a very thin film. This is 48 gauge polyester. We're running over a couple thousand feet a minute, slitting tangentially, which means that the material is going straight across, supported by rollers on either side and slitting the material. So this is the winding side of the machine and we're winding up. There's lasers up here to help this operator figure out where the cores go and that's co coordinated with the knife positioning system. We have pick in place, we have a lot of different ways to get the cores in place, but this particular one has the auto shear with the laser assist for cores. With shear slitting, there comes different knife styles, different blade angles, different blade styles. They all have a purpose. When we're slitting foils, we typically use a double hollow ground knife. Slitting plain papers, we use a, a more of a standard knife. We're slitting thick films. We use a wide rim knife. There's reason for it because when you shear cut, you've got to displace the material and that material has to go somewhere. And depending on the type of material, it may create a raised edge. If you have a raised edge, you need to work around the knife style to get to the right result. Wide rim knives tend to just displace it and the material goes around it. So for thicker films like thermoform, things of that nature, it does a great job of pushing away. When it comes to foils, you don't wanna roll that edge because the foil could be soft even if it's laminated with film. And getting that double hollow ground tightly in there means the least amount of material that has to bend around that uh, male knife as it's in contact. So you're, you're looking at some thermoform material here with some wide rim holders. They're a little bit hard to see, but uh, that's really what's, what's going on in this photograph. Want to talk about cleanliness and cleaning. It's not uncommon for us 
in certain applications to clean the material after it's slit. And this is one of the ways, this is a little vacuum. And so we, we have brushes, sometimes we just use the vacuum tube itself right up against the material, pulling away any debris that's coming from the slitting. Shear slitting is very clean, but sometimes materials could have brittle coatings on them and they just might want to flake at that point. And it's just a nice way to do it, have the material come through and pull anything that's possible off the surface right after slitting. These are attached to the knife, they move with the knife, so that's web cleaning. We do it other ways as well, like tacky rolls and, and web cleaners, vacuum style web cleaners that go across the entire web. Uh, a lot of times we do that before slitting and do this again after slitting. So that's, that's what you're looking at here. Now, when you're slitting adhesive products, primarily label stock, you're gonna find there's a layer of adhesive between the liner and the substrate. And that adhesive can build up on the blades and it's problematic. This picture is kind of showing you adhesive rings here. What we do is we build in wicking systems. This is a very simple wicking system for label stock right here where it's just a round wick. It squeezes around there. Customers lubricate them to keep the blade wet. Also on our auto positioner, we have a wicking scraping system that'll go on the female side wicks and re-lubricate all the active knives. Of course, there's drip pans under each one of these two, so the web can pass by, but there's a, there's a small catch pan underneath just to catch anything that might come by. Um, another picture here. This is another wicking system right here where we have a lubricated felt all the way across. When the active blades are there, this will engage, and there's lubricating needles that are set to resaturate based on so many feet of material. So that's um, lubrication. This is our Capridge 900M, and it's a base machine that we sell a lot of just typical slitting. And one of the nicest features is the auto shear positioner and the laser uh, core pointing. It really eliminates a lot of workload on the operator. You simply go up to the screen, you put in your web width, your cut sizes, it'll automatically move the knives and it'll tell you where the cores go. In this particular case, it's moving the female rings only, but that's really the heavy lifting. We make versions that do all the above, but minimum to do this is really the hard work. It sets all the tolerances. It really helps the machine. There's no tools involved. You don't have any set screws. It's on a precision pneumatic shaft that pneumatically inflates. So all the heavy lifting is done. And like I said, eliminates a lot of workload. But once the rings are set, the machine knows where the operator should be putting the cores. And by doing that, you eliminate a lot of startup waste. So you're not pulling them around, finding that you're off and having to reposition the cores multiple times to get everything aligned. So it's quick and easy way. I know here at Capridge, when we make it, it's just, it's kind of a joy because you don't really have to think. You, know, you enter in your sizes, away it goes, you know where to put the cores and you're simply running the machine. So as we mentioned before, there's really two types of setups. One is tangential shear slitting and the other is wrap shear slitting. You're looking at tangential right now where there's a lead in either roll, which is this one right here, and another one, and the material is coming straight across tangentially to the knives. Which one should you be using? Really depends on the application. Most people now are tangential slitting. It works in, in a, a wide range of products, gives you great results, allows you to easily put a knife positioner into the system um, and not have to worry about different multiples of sizes, metric, English, et cetera. But, when we go over these applications, we're typically asking questions about the material types, the speed of the machine, the trim widths, etc. This is an example of wrapped shear slitting. The material, in this case paper, is coming in around the roller and wrapping around the shear shaft. We have a slitting knife holder right here and it's going into a multi-ring groove. The trim pickup tubes are right at the point here, pulling off the material. So there's a short distance for narrow trim at very high speeds. So this is a 6,000 foot per minute machine, and we're just managing the trim right into the tube. So we don't have breakage or any issues. It's just feeding it straight in. So we're wrapping it, presenting it nice and flat, and it can't move anywhere, taking a little trim on either side and feeding it right into these trim tubes. So that's wrap shear slitting. 